You got me now? Yeah. All right. Want to count us in? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with three this time. Three, two, one. Boom. Woo. Welcome to another episode of Necro Electric. I'm your host, Sean D. Skellington. This little princess of the podcast over here is my wife, Kylie. And filling in for Jordan Chitlet again, we got Elise Christian. Hey, guys. Boom. And today we got a special, super special, guest. special guest. One I've been looking forward to. Drum roll. He's the director of Hollows Grove. He's the producer of Stevie Weeby Show. And he was part of the worst fire team ever, Mr. Craig Efros. What's up? What's up? Ta da! Thanks for having me. <laughs> what is our theme today? Our theme today is Hollywood Life and Struggles. Ooh, that's a yes. new one. <laughs> yes. So I have never lived in Hollywood. Sean has never lived in Hollywood. But these two. I've stayed here a couple times. Yeah, we've stayed here a few yeah, times. Playing. But these two, lifelong Hollywood resident, right. or Los Angeles in general. Yeah. And how long have you been here, Elise? God, I've been out here 10 years, maybe a little longer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I moved out here when I was just turning 18. Um, and I just turned 30, so one of those years I moved back home, and the rest I've been here. You mean you just turned 25? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you I start mean. going backwards after, like, yeah, 25. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 25 is what I meant, guys. Uh, yeah, long time. Time has flown. It's crazy. I didn't know this was going to be my home, my forever home. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. What was that? Got a malfunction. Uh-huh. Something beeped. It's just going to repair. I didn't do it, I swear. There it goes. There we go. Back in business. Okay. Here we are. Um, well, in LA, like if you're here more than like two or three years, you're like a local. Because mm. most people from LA aren't actually like from LA. From LA, yeah, it's a very transient city. So most people are like anything over two or three years, you're you're in LA. Right. Before we get too far into it, we have a goal of one million subscribers. One million. Oh, come on, guys. We're at like 300, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Subscribe. We Just a little ways to take go. a second. Do it. So we have our little friends of the podcast section in this episode. It's actually our very own Jordan Chitlet. Wanted to pop in and say hello. So boom. Hey, friends. It's me, Jordan. Crazy co-host of Negro Electric. I would say second cutest. Maybe. Um... <laughs> But anyway, uh, I am missing you guys here in Texas. I mean, I'm not envious that you're in California. Uh, Maybe a little, maybe a little. Um, But I'm missing you guys. The highlight of my week is going to be taken away. What am I going to do with my time? Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great time, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye. What up, Jordan? Holding it down in Texas. We'll see you soon. See you when we get back. And we're back into it. So back into it. So struggles. I guess it could be like showbiz struggles. I yeah, struggle here there's a lot of when struggles. When I play shows here. Oh yeah. What did you deal with when you were? Well, I I came through here uh, playing with my bands. Right. Uh, unconventional thought process. Mm-hmm. Last night on the coffin. And when I was a kid, I've always wanted to be in bands, and my dreams were to play like. The Whiskey Go Go, the Viper Room, the Rainbow Room. So the first time I came through here with my band, um, Unconventional Thought Process, we got to play. It was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Then every other fucking time we came, that's when the um, prepay your fucking right. pre-sell your tickets right. thing uh. came out. So like I'm like, even though we drew well, they're like, yeah, it's just our new policy. You gotta like pay a thousand dollars up front and go sell these to all these like yeah your friends. That sucks. And, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of defeats the purpose of being a small band. Would they like cancel your show if you didn't sell enough? No, was a, no, because you would give them the money up front. Oh, okay. So yeah, if, if you couldn't catch. sell the tickets, you don't make your money. You don't make your money. You play to an empty room. Well, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, was it wasn't a problem. To bummer, man. To yeah, the show, for real. Right. but it was just a hassle that we now had to go like and physically sell these fucking tickets to get our money back. Yeah. Because yeah, we don't we work. don't make any money if our fans just show up to the venue and they pay gotcha. the door. That's the the venue's money, not oh. our money. Right. So now we're burdened with 
don't buy tickets at the door. Buy them from us. Buy them from you. And we have to do fucking PayPal, Venmo. Oh, God. That's a lot of shit. You Sounds like a nightmare. Mail the fucking tickets. It's like... Yeah, and then you get a lot of friends or fans who just, you know, they want to be on the list. And yeah. Up. Yeah, hook us up. Yeah. 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 Everyone wants a hookup. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. So, I hate I that. I mean, LA is a tough city. You know, you have to be able to... You got to be a hard worker. <laughs> You got to make that money because the bills out here are crazy. Rent is crazy. Would you say most people have more than one job? Oh, yeah. I've had at least two jobs for the last 10 years. Damn. Like, it's it's kind of necessary. I don't know how people do it with just one. Um, I work nights, late, late nights. And then I just started working days not too long ago. So that's that's interesting. I don't get a whole lot of sleep anymore. But um. It's necessary. My rent alone is over two thousand. Oh, and you have roommates or it's crazy. You, and by that's yourself with a roommate? Jesus, with a roommate. That's great. That's more than like our mortgage. I mean, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't had a rent lower than two thousand in like eight years. That's insane. So yeah, that's, we work to pay our bills. That's why I never move because yeah. we live on rent control. Because the oh, that's good. Now. Like it's it's stupid to see people paying like twenty five hundred for a single. Yeah, yeah. that's like the going rate now. Yeah, like, I yeah. saw the little signs oh, yeah. that was walking around. And that's yeah. that's like no AC and like old carpet. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah. If I was looking at one bedrooms a year ago, and if I wanted a nice, decent one bedroom with AC, I was looking yeah. at like twenty eight hundred. Jeez, it was crazy. I'm like, I can't do this. So I think the prices are going to go down though, because I think it's I just too so. it's just too ridiculous. Like, I mean, it's yeah. too expensive. I mean, it's like you have to think everybody's making a million dollars. You know, and that's not even buying a house. Like people right. don't understand, you live in like the Midwest or anywhere, and you get a house for what people pay for rent here for like a year. You get two houses ah, for that. Two. <laughs> I mean, that's literally why we moved to Texas. We're living in San Jose, and yeah, similar Bay similar area situation. You know, We're right? Thousands of dollars just for like under a thousand square feet. Of yeah. House, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, the main thing is, like, what you want to do. Because if you want to get into, you know, music or film or, you know, any of that stuff, mm-hmm. you, you can do it in other cities, but it's just tougher. Yeah. Right. Right. You want to be here. Right. It's all about chasing that dream. Exactly. Yeah. I can't yeah. handle the, the, the traffic here, though. Uh, <laughs> I, I, that's always the big thing. I mean, that's why I used to love the Californians on SNL, because, like, everybody just talks about how you get places and how bad the yeah. traffic is. The traffic yeah. is brutal. <laughs> Yeah. It takes me 20 minutes to get down the street. Like, I live in West Hollywood, and if I want to go to Beverly Hills, it's a 25-minute drive, and it's down the street. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, you think Steve red lines? You haven't seen me. And- oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> this Steve's one. Yeah. He just skateboards everywhere. I mean, that's, you know, that's yeah. he gets by, but he had to go on a trip the other day, and he took the, the like, train to go to Riverside, and I'm like, oh, man, good luck, because that's, like, a two-hour train ride, you know? Yeah. Just Damn. Out there. I'm like, that's crazy. But, like, you know, I start biking more, like, I, like, or just walking. At least you just, you kind of stay in your little area. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing, now. Yeah. I walk to most stuff. Do you guys have birds, in like, over where you live? Do we have, bird? have birds? Do we have birds? No, okay, I'm sorry. I think birds. the whole world might have birds. <laughs> <laughs> like, birds, the scooters, the electric Oh, oh the scooters. Okay. Not in Waco. No. Dallas and Austin. So we have them everywhere here, and, I mean, I never really was into it. Yeah. But I started recently and they're amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're super dangerous, don't get me wrong. Like <laughs> yeah. I've eaten shit so many times <laughs> and they're awful. They're so dangerous, but it gets you from A to B quick and it's cheap. Yeah. And I went to Europe recently for my birthday and we took birds all over Paris and it Oh, was that's cool. Dope. It's a yeah. great way to get around and it's a lot cheaper than Uber. Was that with your mom? That was with my mom. Was she riding that scooter? No, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> she would freak. Now, By the way, Elise and I are cousins, if yes. nobody knew. <laughs> That's right. She's also an actress. She was on a, a cool show called uh, Magic Fun House. Yes. Yeah, cool. yeah, I was. I was. It was awesome. Comedy, kind of like adult, dark. Adult comedy. Yeah. Comedy, yeah. Sort of his alley. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, perfect. Yeah. Stuff. I moved out here to I'll ask. I'll send you Hollow's Grove, his film. Please. Yes. Okay, cool. It's really great. We watched it. Yay. while it was. I'll watch it. Is tomorrow Sunday? Yes. Yeah. I'll watch it tomorrow. That's scary. That's She's got some time. <laughs> um, Schedule it in. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I moved out here to act. And as you know, to act or to be in that industry at all, mm-hmm. it's just, it's a struggle. You have to be willing to grind yeah. and 
fucking audition every day, all day, and people say no to you every day, and you have to be able to take it. But at the same time, you two specifically, like, you were on two seasons of that show. Yeah. Which was pretty dope. And this yeah, guy made great. a whole fucking film. I know. Awesome. We're doing it. Yeah. To do anything is tough. You know, I commend anybody that comes out here and they work and they get something. It's, it's yeah. hard, man. It's a it's struggle. It's really hard. I mean, for the actors, it's tough because a lot of time they tell you, oh, you know what? You need a manager, an agent. And then right. they tell you, well, but you can't get one until you get into SAG. But see, the, the hook is that to get into SAG, you either need to know somebody, you get called what's tapped heart lead which means like they kind of sign you in Mm -hmm. or you have to get what they call vouchers and then you got to pay your dues and then eventually you know so there's all this like like red tape and it's you know racket yeah it's it's, i don't want to say it's a scam because it's not a scam but it just it's difficult to like get your foot in the door and then you know once you finally do get somebody do they really care are they working for you yeah right it's tough i mean i just had a friend who's whose wife's an actress and like you know they they want to go with the new agency and they want to take more of her side stuff like you know Mm. money from her side gigs that she does on her own it's like that's crazy i know so it's it's, everything's kind of a game you gotta like it's all about the money yeah well i think it's the industry in general because like even in music now that you know labels can't sell cds like they used to do right now they want your merch now they want yeah part of your ticket sales it's greedy well that was the thing with uh you know because we've had a lot of musicians on weeby show and like the mm-hmm. thing with that is like you know it's so different now because everything's spotify or it's streaming and so they get stuff like you said on their merch and all that and now if they want to take more of that it's like where do the artists make money yeah you know? if they're if they're taking your cds your you know your spotify your this your that and then now they want your t-shirts and your tours it's like forget it's it. like what's left <laughs> and then if you have like a whole band you got to split it up right. it's like what well, and you get the sob stories like well, and you know, because back in the '80s, early '90s, when you know CDs were twenty bucks and people yeah. bought them just by the look of the covers, right? You would get like a big per diem for your mm-hmm. put your records together, and now it's like, oh well, you know, you can get a thousand dollars to record this. You know, maybe right. you guys can produce it yourself. You know, that kind of shit. Being a rock star isn't what it used to be. <laughs> At the same time, like yeah. we also need seventy five percent of your income. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, uh, because everything's so freaking expensive out here that's why i basically why i started working in nightclubs so i've been in nightlife for 10 years now Mm -hmm. as a waitress um and the money's great thank god you know ideally i wouldn't want to be doing it at like this stage in my life i'm getting old the hours are you're getting old (laughs) for la maybe i guess i'm I'm not 21 anymore you know (laughs) so but I, it's been it's been great for me. It helps me pay my bills, and the hours are flexible. And to have a job like that, mm-hmm. it really helps because it frees up your days, so you can audition or you can have another job. So it's been it's been a blessing for me. How are the people though? Uh, you know what? They're cool. Yeah. I mean, I I for the most part look forward to going to work. It's right. kind of yeah. like going to a party, you know. Right. So <laughs> it's not I'm not sitting in a cubicle. I get to be on my feet, I get to wear sexy stuff and meet new people and whatever. So it's it's fun. I don't really have any complaints. You meet a lot of producers with business cards. Uh, yeah. no, no, not as many as you think. Like, <laughs> yeah. okay. yeah. Now that. now it's just uh, slide in my DM, you know. Right. Oh. Let me get your Instagram. Right. Let, me get Let me get your Insta girl. <laughs> oh god, all right, here you go. That would be the oh. only thing that I, I miss from like the Bay Area is just the weird people. Uh, if, you guys, if you guys haven't seen, they have a new series called Stevie on the Streetie. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's that's like, a good yeah, one. I'm yeah. fucking obsessed with that shit. They just go around and mostly talk about, you know, it's random people about like Illuminati, reptilian, like yeah. stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was a, such a natural for Steve to do that because yeah. he, he's like a oddly a people person, but he's also like a hermit. But, yeah. you know, we find like, you know, LA is just filled with, especially around Hollywood or Venice Beach. That's our next locale we're going to go to. You just find, you know, the craziest yeah, people. But crazy. that's what makes it interesting, you know? Mm. I mean, I find that stuff fun, but you never know what you're going to get, you know? There's a lot of crazy in L.A. Well, they, big, of one of the crazy. newest ones I, it had me laughing so hard because, cause I, you know, I've met Steve and know his personality, you know, through us hanging out or whatever. And 
when uh, he went and asked that that one guy and he starts talking about family. Oh, yeah. Family and, then, and then he's like, yeah. come here, come here. And yeah. then, like, just a whole grip of these, like, homeless, crazy dudes, like, surround him. Oh, like, shit. Yeah. Were you scared? Um, no. Well, I, maybe Steve was. I wasn't scared. I mean, I'm always, like, when you're when we're just filming it, I'm just, like, trying to make sure we're getting the shot. And, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I have his back. But, you know, I'm never scared of the people. You just don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. You know? Right. Some of them are. What's the weirdest thing you think you ran into? I mean, just like a lot of it, just just the stuff that people say you find surprising. Like there mm-hmm. might be a normal looking guy, but he's got a crazy story, you know? right? The sure. Or they start like yeah, like throwing out all like the masons and yeah. The weirdest one because we did ghosts recently, and I thought we'd have a lot of ghost stories. And yeah, like, but no, more people have alien stories than they have ghost stories. So that was like the funny really thing to me was like. You would think Ghost is such like an old timey, you know, there's probably yeah. yeah. stories. Yeah. But no, people are way more into aliens and have How more funny. Than yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think that kind of stuff's interesting. But it's just, you never know what you're going to get. That's what makes it fun. But yeah. it, it is nerve wracking. We do, that's like, the, that wears us down more than anything. It's yeah. just like getting yeah. out there. Because it's hard to get people to even stop and talk. And then the ones that do don't want to stop talking. Right. <laughs> then you're like, okay, it's yeah. been 20 minutes, dude. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So can where can people find Stevie on the um, street? Just go to, uh, well, he's got his website. Thanks to Sean. So StevieWeeby.com. StevieWeebyShow.com. Yeah, StevieWeebyShow.com. And then uh, on YouTube, you can check out, you know, this, just look up Stevie Weeby. He's all over YouTube. And his uh, Insta is Kwangu. Q-U-A-N-G-O. Cool. You. And Craig directs all of this, if we didn't make I that help, clear. I help. We yeah. work on it. You know, it's still a work in progress. Yeah. We actually have a new segment we're doing. It's just like a puzzle thing, so we're going to see how that works out. That's just more about watching Steve get frustrated, which cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you have some good beso- behind-the-scenes footage yeah, that, like, didn't make the cut. Thing, cause really? It's really, like, kind of cut and dry. It's yeah. like uh, we get in there, and it's an hour, and then, we'll, you know, we're out. Everybody yeah. always gives me a hard time. Why isn't it two hours? I'm like, hey, man, people got to go. Steve's got to go, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, getting back to LA, like it's tough, you know. I mean, I've I've grown up with a lot of people, actors, you know, people that want to get into the business, and it's 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 a hard road to haul, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean? yeah. And I think LA is weird because it used to be what was cool is LA used to be a city where you could kind of have nothing and live here and live fine. But we started to get what happened with San Francisco, which is like, and you guys know from San Jose, where it's like the tech bros and the big mm-hmm. ones started coming in. Silicon Valley and so LA's become like that now it's just like super expensive you know it's tough it's weird like this area used to be super ghetto especially where me and Steve live and now like there's nice restaurants there's there's fancy galleries right down the street I mean it's crazy it's just all changing yeah I used to live on this street I was telling them yeah. And it was a little sketch I lived (laughs) right outside my balcony door my big you know glass window was basically a crack house. Oh God! <laughs> I could sit in my kitchen in my I would sit in my sink and just watch shit go down. Oh every night. shit! And there were multiple raids. Uh, there was a shooting, and this is literally like a couple feet from my. Balcony. That's crazy. So needless to say, I never went out on my balcony. Good. There was like <laughs> at least five to ten random dudes on yeah. this porch every day. That's just crazy doing drugs, dealing, whatever. So it was entertaining for sure. Oh, yeah. But uh, now I'm in West Hollywood. It's a little little nicer. Sure. I love it. It's cool. I can walk everywhere. That's good. Not so many shootings. Yeah. You know. When I was a kid, we never used to come to Hollywood. Yeah, Because it was, it was dangerous. Dirty. Really? Was it like gang stuff? Total, total gangs. I remember there used to be a, like, they call it the original Tommies, but it wasn't the original Tommies. There's a whole controversy with fake Tommies versus original, mm. which is a hamburger. But there was like a gang fight in there, like a bunch of like metal dudes fighting with like a black gang. And like, oh my god! <laughs> I was with my mom, you know, just walking Warriors. around, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, you want to stop and lift, but you're like, I don't want to get yeah, yeah, you know, and so, like run. So yeah, you would just take off. But I remember like the most exciting times. I had a friend, uh, my friend Summer, used to live like on one of these streets, one of these small like things. We were like 12 or whatever, and mm-hmm. I remember like 
there was a limo pulling up to one of the shops down here. And back in the day, they used to have terrible shops. They had like leather stores and all this stuff. And like MC Hammer rolled out. With, yes. Like, with, like, <laughs> with like all these dancers. And like everybody stopped and they were super excited. And they're like, oh my God, it's MC Hammer. That was like yeah. the only, Hammer time. That Hammer was time. The only <laughs> exciting Hollywood story I had as a kid because we never came here. Otherwise. That's funny. So was super scary. Bane's first celebrity that he met, yeah. he actually Jeremy. met yesterday, Hedgehog. Ron Jeremy. Fitting. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose he lives down the street from us, like on the corner. But I don't really? Know which house, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. He's definitely sketched, though. I mean, he's been. Well, you guys got a bunch of cool people up in your area. You got yeah. Yeah. Alice McMahon. Yeah, yeah. Rain Valine. I mean, we're right by there right now. We're pretty close. But yeah, I was telling um, Sean that like this actual hotel. There's a documentary called Camp Hollywood, which is about this hotel. And really? Those pictures up front. We're, we're, oh. we're coming to you live from. Um, was this the Highland, Highland, Highland Gardens? Gardens. Yes. 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 Highland or Franklin? Highland. 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 It's like an yeah. old 50s kind of, it's, kinda, yeah. it's a little <laughs> run down, but it's like, you could tell at one point in time it was a little bougie. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like the happening spot. Well, if you ever see like this documentary, it's like pretty interesting because I think it's like around the 90s and there's like a lot of young actors and mm. like old actors that stayed here. And it was weird because they treated it like an apartment complex because back then rents were probably, I mean, like a, it was probably cheaper to live here than sure. to rent. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, it's just interesting. If you get a chance to check it out, you'll see like kind of. The I will. It kind of has that feel of yeah. like an apartment complex. Yeah. Even the inside. Yeah, it totally does. Yeah, because yeah. the girl who played in Watchmen, she's like one of the photos up front. She was a oh. like, blonde girl who was like, I forget which character she played, but she was like staying here. It's like, it's interesting. It's just kind yeah. of, you know, that's it has the thing. Some history. With, yeah, LA is all about Hollywood history, Hollywood and mm-hmm. music history. We got time for a sponsor. Yes, we do. Our first sponsor is Dark and Dreary Clothing. Dark and Dreary is an edgy fashion and lifestyle brand that embraces great design and unsurpassed quality. Dark and Dreary has quickly gained a following amongst fans of occult, horror, punk rock, heavy metal, and all around free thinkers without shoving a preachy, trendy, or political message down your throat. So buy the best and fuck the rest. Darkandjuryclothing.com. Does mm. fuck not come naturally to no, it you? Does. It does. I, I felt like it was a very perky fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, <that's sweet. laughs> I was trying to you know, bring She'd some. Be like, fuck the rest. Fuck the rest. Like, yeah. Fuck the rest. Fuck the rest. Fuck them. Fuck them. So, how long did it take to make uh, Hollow's Grove? Well, Hollow's Grove was. It's, uh, if you guys didn't know, he wrote and directed. Yes. Yeah, it was it was tough. That was like a, it was a good learning lesson, that's for sure. But um, the movie was tough because I had written it probably about a year or more before it came out, mm. um, and then it was a process of figuring out like, well, first off, when I wrote it, it felt very fresh. So there weren't any movies like it at that time in that genre. Now that being said, there were like you know Blair Witch and found footage films, but nothing in that same genre. And then mm-hmm. by the time I wrote it. To the time where we finally shot it and released it, there were other films in a similar ilk. So that was a little, that was a little disheartening. But you know, I felt like it was still we had our own take on it. So yeah. it was like we definitely. Was the thing. Um, but you know, the hard part was you know you have three steps in making a film. You got pre-production, you got production, then you got post. And you know, I was well versed. I grew up in production, so I was well versed in you know pre-production and production and post and distribution that's actually the fourth channel is distribution was those were kind of a little more iffy to me um but going back to it so we shot it in eight days which oh, is shit. like yeah, yeah. Wow. Which was really big, which was that's really impressive nice. yeah that was <laughs> i it was frustrating so i did the film with my dad my dad has worked in hollywood for shout like, out to dad sat, shout out to my pops he worked in hollywood for like you know over 50 years Mm-hmm. And this was like a chance for us to do something together, and we've been wanting to work together. And my dad's getting older, so we thought, like, why don't we put this together? And yeah, the production's something. dope in it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And so, you know, we, we decided we were finally, we weren't sure how we wanted to go about it, which is also why it took time to figure out how we were going to do it. We got it out to different people, and a lot of people liked it, but eventually we decided we're just going to do it ourselves. So that was the first step of making the film. And the second step was figuring out how we're going to do it. And in order to keep it, you know, at a reasonable budget, since, you know, we had me, my pops and one outside investor. So that was it. So once we decided to do it ourselves, um, 
you know, it was tough. And, 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 you know, we had, like I said, it was an eight day shoot, which even a lot of the crew we have were really great, really like skilled, like talented people who mm-hmm. work a lot of like, you know, bigger productions. So for them to hear doing like a film in eight days is like, they were like, how are we going to do this? You know, yeah. that even um, sounds insane to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of time. No, no. And that, and you worry that when you're shooting that way, that, it, you know, is that going to affect your film? And of course it does, but not in the ways you would always think it's, yeah. you know, people today say we'll, we'll fix it in post. That's like the big mm-hmm. thing. We'll fix it in post. And now my buddy who works in post says, even the post guys say, we'll fix it in post post. Like they're going to fix it like in the coloring room or somewhere else. So it's like, uh-huh. you know, everybody's passing the buck, but when you shoot in eight days, what you realize is that there's the little mistakes you have to fix first and then get to the bigger mistakes. So, you know, it's a learning process, but I think it was a good one. I mean, and I thought I was happy with the overall outcome of the film, you know, but then the tougher part was figuring out about distribution because mm-hmm. distribution is a huge racket as well as, you know, just making the film. Yeah. That's, so that's the thing. When you go to pre-production, you're planning, okay, how are we going to, how are we going to make this film? How are we going to, you know, how are we going to get this set up? Where are we going to shoot it? All these different things. Then production's about, hey, we got to get this done. We got eight days. We got to shoot an hour and a half film. You know, I'm probably now an hour and 20, whatever it came out to. Were you losing your shit or were you cool the whole time? Uh, I was cool. I mean, there was some definitely <laughs> some tense moments. I mean, as with anything, you know, I mean, film is a tense medium. I mean, especially oh, yeah. like when you when you do have that time, you know, it wasn't just about shooting it in eight days. In order to keep the budget down, we're trying to shoot 12 hours. And a lot of films right. with features and things like that, you know, if you have a big feature, they'll go 18 hours, you know, 16, 18 hours, 20, 20 hours. Mm-hmm. I, my, I worked production for a long time, and one of my longest shoots was 27 hours. Damn. straight wow wow and that sucked because i was like and i thought we had it bad and then i talked to a guy who worked on like collateral who said he shot 32 hours straight damn how do you keep your eyes open well, you get delirious by about hour 22 that's insane like, hour 22 you start like seeing shapes and colors and i remember just like you felt drunk you know at that point yeah. oh and my then, god and then we, we were all manning up because i was younger and so I went out with the other people I work with, and we had like a morning drink after, like mimosas. Yeah, I kind of have to. And then I just crashed for like a day and a half. Damn. Because you're just dead. But it's um, exhausting. Oh, definitely. I mean, and that's the thing. I think that's the biggest thing about film that a lot or TV too that people don't realize is like they're long hours. You know, like people don't don't believe it until they see it. But you know, you work on average 14, 16 hours on average. Damn. Um, but going back to it, so. We had to keep it to 12 hours so in that time you have to like you're trying to get as much as you can get but you also don't want to just rush everything yeah. and right. make it feel a certain yeah. way and and that's one testament to i think what we did is because a lot of people thought we shot it for like a month or oh, yeah. it doesn't look like, you, like yeah. you did that yeah i would have never guessed yeah and that, I, that's the only thing i pride myself on because i think you know i wish we had more time i think if i was ever to do another feature there's no way I would shoot it in that amount of time. Mm-hmm. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to the yeah. crew and the cast. Well, and you'd have to have, like, your whole crew would have to be, like, gun-ho. Yeah. Like, to, to accomplish what you accomplished. Right. Yeah. Like, any time I've ever tried to do anything, even rehearsing with bands, like, right. oh, there's man. always one or two guys just fucking off, you know, yeah. like, slowing it down. No, it's tough. I mean, and, and then, you know, you, and the, the problem for me was, so when I started... You know, I started with my pops because he was going to produce, and I said, look, you know, he needed me to help him schedule and, and do kind of the budgeting. So I did that, and then I came to a point where I was like, I got to start working on my stuff. Like, I can't do this anymore. Like, if we're going to shoot, I need to start working on, you know, casting, directing, like everything yeah. else that actually matters to get mm-hmm. the film done. So, you know, uh, I brought in a friend who did, you know, the production work, but it was like, you know, that was stressful. And now you have like a month and you got to start like shooting, you know? And so you have, you're, you're looking for locations. Like our stairwell location, if, in, if you watch the film, there's a stairwell scene where the guy falls down the stairwell yeah. and all that stuff. We didn't have that till about a day or two before we shot. Oh, shit. Like that was a big fight. Dang. We went at a lunchtime to go scout it. The guy who owned it was fighting because he didn't want us to shoot there. And it was like a crazy ordeal. So you're two days away from trying to finish the film and you don't know if you're going to be able to use the stairwell. Oh, that's crazy. And every other stairwell we looked at didn't work. Yeah. You know, because you needed the room for the guy to go down and you needed the space and, you know. So 
finally we locked that. But that's the kind of stuff where you get stressed out because you're mm-hmm. like, how are we going to find this and get it done? And start contemplating gorilla style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, for us it was important because you also you have a stunt guy, you know, jumping down the stairs and yeah. Yeah, Mach 10, annoying. and you got to make sure there's enough room for everything to happen. But um, but yeah, so those are the kind of those are the kind of stresses you get to. I mean, and. You know, there in a low budget. There's a lot of things you got to figure out on the spot. Like, how are we going to get this? How are we going to do this? You know, mm-hmm. and then everybody's got their two cents, and everybody thinks, well, we do it this way, we do it that way, and so there's not big battles, but there's little things you're trying to get accomplished every day. But so then you shoot the film, you get it done, and now your big problem is okay. Now we got to get into post, mm-hmm. and then post becomes a whole another nightmare because especially for horror, um, a big part of it's sound. You know, sound design. And mm-hmm. uh, shout out to my buddy Sam Bauer, who's like my partner in crime. Shut but, up. Uh, <laughs> but Sam and me, you know, Sam did a really good job with, you know, the audio. And, you know, we needed to work hard to figure that out because there's so much that goes into audio for films that really sells films, not just music, but audio. In our, our case, we don't really have a lot of music. You know, we're using like, you know, bands and things for some of the songs and stuff like that early on. But the actual music is just the sound of the environment. So mm. you need a lot of design to kind of like make that work and kind right. of keep the, you know, I always said that I wanted that because I, I don't think everybody understood it, but I'm like, you need the building to feel alive, yeah. you know? Sure. And so uh, that's a big thing with horror is like a lot of people don't realize how important sound plays a part. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like in the exorcist or anything, when once the synth starts to play. And if you ever put like a horror movie on mute. No, it's, it's just no, it doesn't no, have the no, same no, feel. No, no jumps, like, no, I yeah. Know. Well, one of my favorites like stories was I think Christopher Walken was saying like uh, when he was doing uh, Dead Zone, like mm. he hates guns, and the director would like whenever he shook somebody's hand, the director would shoot a gun like like a blank in the background to give him that jump. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know that was kind of a genius move. And yeah. I, I think stuff like that's important because you know you want to give people those those scares those moments but it's it, you know that's it's it's tough especially when you're shooting it because you don't have that you know you don't have that ambiance so everybody ha- it's like kind of acting to a green screen you know yeah right everything there to kind of fill in the blanks but um and then you know and then after you get through post then you got to get through distribution which is you know going back to spotify and all these other things that's a whole nother nightmare we actually we at first weren't sure how we wanted to go about it we had reached out to some people it didn't seem like it was working so we saw we thought we'll just throw it up on iTunes, fuck it, we'll see mm-hmm. what we could do ourselves. So we threw it up on iTunes, and like, it was number 60 for like, you know, whatever, a month. And then one person found it, and it slowly moved up to number nice. 6. Nice, that's how it happens. So then we were in like the top 10 for like, I want to say like two or three months. We were like yeah. in the top 10 of iTunes Snap. before, that's which was great. great. When the money started rolling in, and we're like, oh, this is exciting. Yeah. You know? And then Halloween came around that year, Yeah. and iTunes redid the storefront. Oh! <gasps> Uh, and so we fuck went, you iTunes yeah. <laughs> so that, that made us realize you know we got to go out and find a distributor and you know, yeah. do something different but you know these were all learning lessons and then the other yeah. learning lesson is you know you have digital like illegal downloads and everybody does that now everybody's yeah. streaming and torrenting and whatever and so you know that was another painful lesson was like how much of that goes on and it doesn't affect the big companies you know but it affects the small companies yeah. So, but you know, that's the way the world is. I mean, you're not going to change that. You got to just roll with the punches. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was, you know. Shop you know, small, buy through. small, yeah, yeah. support yeah. handmade, um, local. Store, yeah. Yeah, we do. Our next sponsor is Mod Ministry Merch. Mod Ministry Merch creates for the edgy woman, like me. Uh, the kind of woman who works hard but plays much harder like her (laughs) that's right Uh, who embraces femininity but tests the societal limits we are not for the faint of heart we are bold we're beautiful check out the Bond Ministry Etsy page for a handmade harness lingerie five star rated seller since 2014 boom five whole years five stars I remember when you started yeah I know it's been five years now pretty awesome so, do you ever get any, because uh, Hollywood's full of creep stories, right? Sure. sure. Yeah. The, I ca- mean, the casting couch. Are the casting <laughs> couch. No, that's I think that's a porno thing, no, isn't that's, it? No, that's that's definitely a thing. Really? I, See? I never experienced it, but, you know, mm-hmm. I've had girlfriends that have. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't, when I came out here and I came out here to act, 
but I had done theater my whole life, so transitioning to film was so different. I came out here, I got into um, AMDA, American Musical and Dramatic Academy, and I studied there for two years, and um, I quickly realized that film wasn't for me. I hated being in front of a camera. It was the opposite of doing theater. You know, theater is big and obnoxious and out there, and then film is small, and you have to be realistic, and I just, I wasn't those things. Yeah. So... I, I did about a year of auditioning, and to be honest, I didn't have any really crazy stories, but my very first audition was for uh, Trojan Condoms, so that was, that was pretty funny <laughs> to, you know, Man. break the ice, and they had me get into a fake bed with a guy, and then, like, go under the covers, and I just remember being terrified. Did you have a, a boner? I had no boner, and if anyone else had a boner, it went down because I bonded the audition. It was uh, awful. Well, that's tough. Um, but that was tough, you know? I mean, like, getting to bed with somebody you don't know. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. They made him, like, take his shirt off, and I, I just had no idea, and so... Um, they don't tell you, like, what's cracking? Sometimes you get information, sometimes you don't. So, as you know, as the years went on, I got a little better at auditioning, but then I just... I don't know. I fell out of love with acting, and then I transitioned mm -hmm. to nightlife, and then now, oddly enough, I'm in skincare, and I do facials, and I love it. I don't have to be in front of a camera. I can be in my own little space. But you were on that show, right? I was on that show, and that was, that was awesome. It was totally by accident, basically. My, my good friend that I went to college with in Livermore, shout out to Livermore. Yeah. Um... We went to college together, and I knew he had become like a really big YouTube sensation. This is Brandon Rogers, and um, he reached out to me and asked me if I still acted, and I told him I didn't really, but I sent him a character that I did like for my friends and family. I was always doing this yeah. <laughs> weird character called Barb. That's my. We had um, quite a few characters, yeah, but <laughs> my alter ego, Barb. And I went and auditioned for the show. I didn't really even know what I was auditioning for, and I got I got it. And it was a really cool time in yeah. my life, and I'll never forget it. So, so it was so cool. So you're still was open to acting, though? No, <laughs> no, I'm not. So not if not. makes another feature, and he wants. So I mean, I would be open to trying like a horror flick. I've never done it. <laughs> she could be the the first one to go down. Yeah, you know, the I girls usually like things. running through exactly. the water, and then. I could run and scream. <laughs> Do you think you would stay in the horror genre or your next thing you'd venture to something else? Well, you know, the funny thing is, like, I mean, I'm always writing and working on stuff, but, like, we actually have a movie that, that I'm kind of helping release right now. So it, we have this weird movie. Uh, this is a great way to plug this, so thanks for weird. that. Uh, it's called Dragonkin. So my buddy, 20 years ago, shot a film, like, on his little camera. He didn't know what he was doing. He had a lot of actors and people. And so we finally... Uh, Shout out again to my partner Sam. We got together and we cut it together after 20 years. Damn. And so, wow. if you like Birdemic or you like The Room or any of those kind of mm. good, bad movies, that's kind of what this is. And so, we had it at a festival and now we're finally going to probably release that soon. Sick. So, that's like, so that's the next thing Scoop we're working out. on. And yeah. it's kind of fun. It's got Exciting. like Jeremy Sisto from Six nice. Under and like, yeah. you know, some other good young actors in it. Um, but it's weird. You gotta definitely want to be like a little inebriated when you watch it. It's not like something. <laughs> you know, awesome. It, it doesn't take like a straight path. Yeah. So, and then uh, I'm doing a short documentary that I'm getting out right now, which is on my my dad and his friend who he grew up with is an artist, an unknown artist, and so we're just trying to show. He basically gave my family all his art. Oh wow. And so he's like an amazing artist. He's done like these huge abstract paintings. We have like over 200 pieces. Holy crap. And, and so we're just finishing a short doc on that that we're getting yeah. to the festival. So, you know, but my next hope, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to do, I, I like sci-fi and horror. So, you know, I'd love to stay within that, but mm -hmm. I'm open to anything. I mean, I love, I love film and entertainment, you know? Yeah. I think you, I think you have to be open to that. You know, I hated working in the industry because I used to work with people that would tell me, I don't watch black and white films. I don't watch subtitled films. And you're like, well, why are you why? here? Yeah. You're like, like, you're missing out on half of what makes film movies film. and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Film, film, you know? Like, right now, one of the biggest films out this year is Parasite. It's a good film. And if you don't watch I subtitles... I want to see it so bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And if you don't want to see... You know, if you don't read subtitles, then you're missing one of the best films of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? 
right, well, we're coming well, up on the yeah. end of our show here. And you guys it want to is. do some shout-outs? Sure. Uh, let's see. Let's shout out to my skincare page, Face yes. It with Elise. That's me. Uh, come get a facial. I work in Studio City right now uh, and maybe soon in Beverly Hills. And I work for Celeste Rodriguez Skincare. So shout out to her too. Yes. Nice. Shout out to Elise for filling in for Jordan. Ooh. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Yes. And shout out to our guest, Craig. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks it's for having me. It's been awesome. Yes. You got love. Shout out to those babysitters taking care yeah, of our I, son I, right I, now. I, <laughs> identical twin. Identical twin babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> Bane was like, what the hell? What? Yeah, what's going on? I was just seeing twins. Yeah, he's never seen twins before. It was kind of cute. <laughs> Craig. Uh, just hit me up on Insta at Afrosian, E-F-R-O-S-I-A-N. And yeah, just wait. We're going to be turning out some more stuff. Yes. Nice. Check out Stevie Weeby Show. Stevie Check Weeby out Show. WFE. Um, we lost one of our members. He's going to start his own uh, channel. So Is that Griffin? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's, uh, Coke is going to start his own gaming channel. Oh, okay. So if you yeah. want to see Coke, uh, check it out. It should be out this month. And for the rest of us, we'll be back on WFE, so just, you know, tune in, game, check it out. Good. Is uh, Bobby Lee going to come back or no? I doubt Bobby's coming back, but Stevie's still there, Griffin's still there, mm-hmm. Arthur and me, so there's the foursome, you know. So, and hopefully we'll play some more and, you know, do, I'm hoping that eventually Coke might come back and join in from time to time. But, yeah, just come back and check us out and stream with us and it's, it's fun stuff. Well, I got Destiny on my Xbox, so maybe I'll jump in yeah, every jump now in. and then. <laughs> Have fun, guys. <laughs> I'll be yeah. doing something else. <laughs> exactly. All right, we'll hit that subscribe button. Check subscribe. Out All our links will be in the description. Yes. And we'll see you next time. Later. Bye, guys.